with all the big calls on all the big races. Welcome back. Yes, that means it's time. You know, another edition of What a Shout, the flagship show here at the Racing Post, filmed on a Thursday these days at the minute for you out there, Dave Orton. What a good job Bruce did with Aidan O'Brien. You loved that show last week. Just turns out he had the Derby winner. Of course he did. Another great guest coming your way. This week, worry not. Don't forget, though, before we get on with matters, this is a like, share, comment, and subscribe show. Thumbs up. That's how you get your comments in. Loads of them last week. Keep them coming. Tricky weekend. Some people think it is, doesn't it? But if you want to get ahead with all the form, stay ahead of the field. Here's how you become a member. It's a tricky weekend, isn't it? If you want to stay ahead of the field, that's how you do it. Just press the button, get involved, become a member. The a great offer out there. And uh, we've got a newbie for you before I go down the panel. Um, introduced our guest for you a little bit later on. She's delighted to be here on this weekend. It's a debut for Maddie Playle. Hey, Doc. Beverly. Tough tracks, actually. Tough tracks. Yeah, especially with how the ground's been riding at some of them recently. Uh, can't believe it's a debut, but delighted to be on. I'll try my best. No promises. I do think it's a very tough weekend. You're keeping a straight face. We've had lots of giggles, haven't we, on and off air. And Robbie Wilders is here. He's not helping matters. Bob's here. Yeah. It's, uh, well, the reason Maddie's not been on air is because you've got to be 25 for these shows. And it feels like she's been around forever, but it she does. has only just turned 25. You have been around forever, Mads, haven't you? Because you were like part of the Canary Wharf crew. If you're not yeah. sure what that is, that's our old office, which is yeah. a we're mail going, ago. We're going back six years to the Canary Wharf office now, aren't we? Yeah, that's everyone before knows who Mads really. is. We yeah. see on the front page, of course. You do the postcards. You do the front page. No politics on this show. We know you're a good tipster. I'll try. Yeah. Try not to let you down. Right. Disclaimer sign. There we go. And uh, a winning nap for you last week. Just a bit, mate, yeah. yeah. Uh, Who was that? All it took Regal, was Bruce Millington. Regal you. reality. Uh, Bruce was slagging me off for the way I said Regal. Because I said like, Regal reality because I've got a bit of a Cockney twang, haven't I? But uh, I'm not going to forget my roots. And we've got a nice position with a postman this week oh. to be revealed later on. Love it. All right, well, let's reveal what's coming up on the show for you then. All right, the big race previews. But before we do that, thrilled to say that we can go and have a word with David Egan. Been waiting ages to get David on the show. It happens today. All right, we'll be getting good word from him. All those previews then. We think it's tricky, but dare us, we'll be doing our best to give you the winners and those all-important weekend naps. Right then, as promised, a classic guest for you here and a debutant on What A Shout. Shall we go to Newmarket and beam in? Because David Egan, I believe, is on the line. David, good morning. Morning, how are you? Absolutely stunning to have you on, mate. Listen, I asked you off air when your first winner was. You're 23, David. You've got a classic in the bag, multiple group ones, two Royal Ascot wins. And yet, you're, your first winner was like back in 2016, wasn't it? Yeah, as you said, I've been uh, around the block, it feels, for me. But for other people, seeing a 23-year-old fresh into the game, it's... Um, yeah, I've picked up a little bit of experience along the way, I suppose, but I'm still uh, still in my uh, early days. I don't want to worry you, but you're you're starting to look a bit like Dad as well. You know, I mean, he's he's looked like a leather suitcase for the best part of twenty years to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're getting a bit yeah, wily well, now as well. How is Dad? All right, is he? Yeah, not too bad. Still uh, still riding as well as ever. Yeah, absolutely. And of course, mum over in Ireland as well, Sandra Hughes. For anyone that doesn't know, David comes from a racing dynasty and hasn't he taken the mantle? Uh, over 300 winners now to date then, David. Great to have you on. And you're attached, obviously, to the Roger Varian Yard, main, main, one of the main men there, we should say, certainly. And uh, your classic win came last September on Eldar, Elder of, who all systems go for the Gold Cup? Yeah, I sat on him... Uh... Twice since the race at York, he feels fantastic. He looks a picture and um, perfect prep run going into uh, a real test of a Gold Cup. It's uh, an open looking race, but I wouldn't change my lad for, for anyone else. I really think he's really thrived since that run. And um, yeah, I'm confident he'll stay the extended trip 
and he's he's a very classy horse who's obviously won at the Royal Neaton. Mm, yes, and like I say, he got a good record there, of course. Two winners on the board. Yeah, he, it's a division that is crying out for a new star. You've got the Ledger winner there, of course. And uh, I guess you've got every right to be confident. And uh, in the same colours, you'll also be looking to the day after that because we've spoken to your, your boss, Roger Varian, about this chap, Sakir. He's now one of the hot gambles for the Commonwealth Cup behind Little Big Bear in the market. Were you part of the decision, David, uh, to drop back in trip after the Guineas? Um, I think it was pretty self-explanatory. I think even before he had run in the Guineas, he was obviously one of the fancy favourites for the Commonwealth and he's just got so much natural speed. The only other race you could really run him in would be the St James's Palace and a, a stiff mile when, when he didn't see out the, the mile on soft conditions. I think it was the logical step going forward to uh, drop, drop him back and show his natural speed and uh, yeah, hopefully we'll... Uh, try and get another winner on the board for KHK at the Royal Meeting. Yeah, it, it, so that, that is the big owner double. What a celebration that will be. You certainly know how to do that, that's for sure. And we wish you well with that. Just before we move on from him, is he really like that top calibre horse? You get the feeling that Roger thinks he is. And you're the man in the saddle. It, is it just electric when he goes? He's, uh, he's a deceiving horse. He... Um... Last year, he took a long time to really thrive and flourish. And uh, he was a slow, but even though he was a winner at Royal Ascot, I still didn't think he was fully matured. Obviously, we saw his true colours in the, the ledger and we could put a line through his run at uh, Champions Day. So um, I really think he's going to be a horse who gets better with age. He's not a three-year-old who was fully furnished and ready to go. He's um, the more time we give him and the more races he has, the better he's going to get for me. And we know he goes with a bit of cut. All right, you can tell I'm excited about him as well. And uh, all right, he'd, he'd be near the top of my tree, July Cup as well, all that sort of stuff. Cannot wait. Right, David, I've got your form up on the Racing Post Members Club, right? And there are loads of horses that I want to talk to you about. And we do this with Roger. We sort of say to him, you know, right, Roger, we want the once race, you know, sort of maiden winners. And he very slowly bats it off to me and tries to get it all calm and all that sort of thing. Let's ramp it up, shall we? Because you've got loads of exciting horses here. Enjfar is one I want. Enfjar? Is that the way we do it? Enfjar, I've got it right. The, the unbeaten Chelmsford winner for Shadwell, anyway. Yeah, the handicapper, handicapper was obviously uh, impressed with his two performances as well. But uh, he's a horse who I obviously rode on debut for Shadwell, who won a very nice maiden in Newmarket, um, wintered well, and it was a very impressive performance to carry a penalty and put the race to bed at the Farlam pole and really hit the line strong. He's a horse who has enough speed for a mile, but the way he hit the line, you could say 10 furlongs would possibly be at his reach um, at the moment, but he's a, an exciting horse who, um, yeah, I'm not sure if he's going to the Royal Meeting, but sort of anywhere between a mile and 10 furlongs there would be well within his grasp. OK, more to come from him then, of course, as we're sure there is from Embesto, who uh, at, at Doncaster last Friday night uh, was backed off the boards. It was an interesting race to watch, David, because they went far side, didn't they? You were on the near side. We thought you might get mar marooned at the, mo at the, you know, the money pole, but uh, it was landed in the end, and you're excited about him. Yeah, I could have easily made myself look a, a bit of a, a melon, couldn't I, being on the wrong side. But, um, yeah, look, he was a horse who had definitely sharpened up from that debut run, and we were very much inclined to take a lead with him and switch him off because we know the devastating turn of foot he has. He showed it at home, and um, we wanted him to do it the right way around, which he, he did, but obviously the other side was a long way clear. I, I had a look across, sort of, Three furlongs out and the other side were at least four or five lengths clear of me. And they were the ones I really fancied. So I knew I had to do something about the situation. So I pulled him out, gradually let him use his stride, but hung across. I almost gradually brought him over there just to something to look at because I thought if I had arrow head down the, the near side, towards the near side rail on my own, it would be very difficult for him to make up that 
ground. I know he's got a lot of natural ability, but he's a horse who's only had one career start, so he is entitled to be green, which he did show, but his his class got him through, and he's a, in my opinion, could be could be top notch. Oh yeah, there we go. He's a great talker, David viewers, isn't he? It's great to get inside the mind of these jockeys because it shows you these split second decisions where you're throwing tomatoes at the telly at them that's how easily it can go wrong um the money was down as well he was a massively back favorite wasn't he lord of biscay at nottingham earlier in the week he's an interesting one another one another one who's a brother to um the boss's group one winner bayside boy he's um obviously a well-bred horse who um probably a box text he, had, he was obviously entitled to win on on short odds but they went a they went a slow pace again. We wanted to take a lead on him. James Doyle sort of walked the dog, as you will. But I had the confidence that my horse had a a better turn of foot than the, than the second favourite. And, um, yeah, he got the job done with the matter of strides. Had an, an easy workout on ground that was probably a lot quicker than he would probably want, ideally. Um, but uh, he's a classy horse. Whether it's um, handicap company or stakes company, it'll be decided, I'm sure. But, um, yeah, a nice horse going forward. What about the Platinum Queen, David? Do you ever have anything to do with her? Obviously, she, you know, a Group 1 winner at two, massive price tag. We spoke to Roger just before she ran in the Temple Stakes. He says she's not been the easiest to train. Yeah, I think that was um, highlighted by her previous trainer Mr Fahi that she wasn't the easiest just the credit of how much of a great job they did with her um yeah she was always going to take a step forward and, and need the run because she's not a filly who you can do uh, an awful lot with her at home uh, Jade who rides her out a day does a very good job with her to keep her calm and relaxed and uh, she's a, a filly who hopefully can sort of take that run under her belt, take a step forward and flourish and um, hopefully take a, a next big step into the right direction, hopefully. It's great to have you on, Dave. We're talking about horses that are genuinely top calibre. I can see you're enjoying it. What what a job you've got, man. Could we potentially see another one? You're due to go up to Haydock for the Pinnacle Stakes. And we've got Mondara running in some very famous colours. She's on a hat trick back on the turf. Yeah, she looks good, doesn't she? She... Um... Won in devastating fashion the last day at uh, Kempton under a lot of weight. It was jumping weight, I think she carried. She carried well over 10 stone. And um, big filly who I rode on debut showed a little bit of greenness. And she was always one that was going to get better with time. Big filly. Um, I like her to take her chance up in stakes company. She looks like a filly with it just oozes in class. And uh, obviously taking on some nice opposition. But she deserves to take her spot. Mm, all right, great stuff. Yeah, and it's a it's a sort of stepping stone to those sort of Lancashire Oaks it's tight races, isn't it? We wish you well with that. All right, that's the big ride on Saturday. We've talked about David's career so far. We've talked about the big hitters that he's got coming up. Let's throw him some curveballs, shall we? Uh, obviously, a Janoub was, a, you know, Roger's, I don't know, sort of high-profile two-year-old winner. Albany Stakes next? Yeah, hopefully... Um... Well, it was a nice stepping stone for Dyer, who went on to win the Albany. So I can't see why Jabara can't win the same race and go on to that same glory. She's she's very good, I think. Um, her work at home had been very good prior to her Newmarket debut. Um, I got caught in a little bit of a pocket, but I know I knew how much class she had, so I was able to take her back, switch her out, and. Still caught me by surprise in how well she quickened in and out of the dip, and uh, she goes there with a life chance. Yeah, I think it was a good race as well, wasn't it? Okay, all right. Uh, and what's the next horse that Dave Egan is really looking forward to riding? You know, and I, you must look and speak to your agent and go, yeah, all right, not today, not that day. One next to its name. Who's that? I honestly think. Eldar Eldarov had the perfect preparation run at York. Obviously, it was a shame not to win, and he was staying on really well, but I've got a lot of confidence in that horse that he can stay the trip well, and um, he's in great form after the race, so couldn't be happier with him. So, um, yeah, he'd be the one who'd get me excited, as would Sakir dropping back in trip. 
he's a very good horse as well. So um, them two, if I can stick two ones beside their name, that'd be great. Oh, look at that. We were getting some curveballs. He was batting it all off and he's only gone for a group one double. Happy days. David, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you on. You genuinely are a really good talker. I talk to loads of these jocks, trust me, and sometimes it's a bit of a puzzle. Uh, how's Safi doing? Is she all right, is she? Safi's very good. She's um, riding a lot of winners. Obviously, back of a Chester Cup win. That's done her the world of good. She's getting a lot of good rides for a lot of big connections. I think she's riding France this weekend, so it's... Um, yeah, all going well here. Yes, absolutely. Amazing what a classic success does for a young man, isn't it? And uh, yeah, I think Tom and Holly might have something to watch out for. All you need to do is win three Group 1s this year, mate, and we'll see you on Spotty. Never mind Frankie. Yeah, that'd be all right. If we have a Champions Day at the end of the year like they had, that wouldn't be too bad, would it? I love it. And if you can tear up for an interview on this show, you can tell I'm a big fan. I tip uh, Metier, so, you know, it's the stars are aligned, David, right? It's on. Yeah, well done, Judge. <laughs> you know it. David Egan, what a star. He is genuinely a star. I would say a, a star on its ascendancy, but he's, he's, he's 23. Two Royal Ascot winners. Classic winner. Group ones everywhere. Big fan? Yes, very you much so. You have to say that. You know? No, no, I am, genuinely. And it's crazy, isn't it? So many young guys coming into the weighing room who are doing a really good job and belying their years. Um, mm. And he's won a lot of money as well. You remember Mishrif in Saudi, gave him a decent pot, and then in Dubai. So, yeah, he's having a fantastic time. He's got good associations, hasn't he, David? Yeah, Egan? well, the varying thing is obvious, isn't it? Rob, come to you. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you've heard him there speaking about Eldor Eldor, confident about Gold Cup. And Sakir as well, which you're a bit well, gutted he's going for the old Commonwealth, aren't you? But... Well, yeah, I mean, I'd give him another go at a mile, but. They're obviously thinking. You think that's rubbish, Maddie, don't you? He was no, never going to go for that race. Well, you might have done. Yeah, but yeah, but when you look at an anti-post price, yeah, I think twenty to one. You look at chance over ability, yeah, and then you come up with something in between. I thought twenty to one. I thought there was a bit. There was a chance. I knew it was a bit of a risk, but mm. I thought if he did go there and he went and he established himself, he could be pretty short. I got it wrong. You get things wrong sometimes. Mm. Twenty to one, I'd be to be wrong occasionally. Well, you mentioned noble style, um, and uh, <laughs> but you're a bit like Robbie, aren't you? And we might as well get this out of the way. Let's have a little chat because what that's got is on the horizon. You like to look at something that well, you might be able to get your way out of near the time, or something that's going to be a big price, short price on the day, which is basically Rob. Yeah, try and do that. Um, try and probably go for horses that are going to be running over the right distance, though. <laughs> <laughs> I'm confident now she's turned 25, um, isn't she? You, in, that, in that case, if you want a job, this is, is an easy, is an easy. Hands on. No, I'm joking. Me and Robbie often discuss things, and to be fair, we do agree a lot of the time. I think Sometimes. We, we have got that similar approach yeah. of. You like foreign racing, don't you? Have you got yeah. anything on? Is there anything we should know about coming to Royal Ascot? Because this is something every year that no matter how much you try and keep your eyes on it, it takes someone who's mad for the fight like this. Like you're probably up like me watching the Australian racing. You look at German racing. You look at French racing as well. Yeah. Anything in particular? that you're looking forward to at Royal Ascot. That's a curveball. We haven't spoken about this before. Not uh, massively, but I do think that Jana Rose, if she comes over oh. for the coronation, will be quite interesting. Um, form probably isn't that strong off face value. I'm not sure that the French filly she's been beating are exactly going to go on and, and win Group 1s themselves, but it's the style with which she's done it. Um, Christophe sumion has been aboard, and pretty much every time he's ridden her past the yeah. post, he's given it a big one. Uh, okay. So that shows you that he's kind of getting excited by her. Um, by Frankel, sire of the moment, and um, she's got that beautiful turn of foot, can settle her off the pace and just deliver her perfectly. She hasn't really been challenged yet, so if she comes over for the coronation, I'd be interested in her stepping back down in trip, but she could still go for the Prix de Dion, of course. All right, OK, so all right, a French free in the coronation, that's worked out well over the years. Maddie's already given you a debut tip there without knowing it. All right, OK, uh, we have a competition for you. Yes, could David Egan be ending up at the Breeders' Cup? Absolutely again, couldn't he? And it's your chance to win the ultimate Breeders' Cup trip. You can do that. There's the app. All we've got to do, look a five pound plus bet on the Racing Post app to enter. It's that simple. Uh, there are rules, of course, max one entry per user. Robbie, I'm looking at you with this per week. Maximum 12 entries per user. Competition period runs June the 5th to August 27th. And we run that in association with Racing Breaks. Download the app, it's that simple. There you go. All right, Breeders' Cup. Uh, shall we look at matters more at hand though? And the big race previews domestically coming your way. Let's start and go up to Haydock. Most of the main fare is coming from Haydock. And uh, it's a sprint at Haydock. They've been topical a little bit recently, haven't they? Should we get the market up? For the 150, it's the Achilles Stakes, which can be a precursor to the King's Stand at Royal Ascot. Let's see who's leading the market there at the moment. I've got a feeling it was equilateral nearby, wasn't it, I think? 
Okay, there we go. As if without further ado, Mission Control have got it up in the screen. And equilateral then. Uh, high draw here, guys. I guess that's why the bookies are hiding for cover. But he's been threatening to win another big one, hasn't he? Regional, of course, who blew them all away. I think that was York, wasn't it? Prince of Pillow, the returning three-year-old. How will the, uh, uh, the panel find a three-year-old up against the big boys? Last year's winner, Russell, all the way down to that right old character, Mondamej, as well. It goes hand in hand, Robbie, doesn't it? What a shout on Mondamej. Yeah, he's, he's often knocking about, and he fella, fella seems to run every week. Uh, he's not up to this level, though, I don't think. Oh. Uh, Equilateral looks plenty short enough, doesn't he? He's only that short because of the draw, and he ran well at Haydock behind Dramatise last time. Well, let's but talk just, about the draw. The fella don't, win. the fella don't win often. Let's bring Maddie in, because y you would have watched the Temple Stakes meeting, and yeah. there was a lot of furore about that, wasn't there? Yeah, and, I mean, the facts were there, and it did look like there was a, a bit of a golden highway at the uh, stand side rail. Those horses in the middle didn't really have much of a chance. <clears throat> I liked Russell at the prices um, because I thought his fourth in the Pal Palace House was a good run. Mm -hmm. He was a bit awkward at the start early last time, just never really got into a rhythm. And when you think about it, he beat Dragon Symbol in this race last year. There's no horse of that calibre in it this time around. Um, but Robbie has scared me off a bit about the draw. Um, couldn't really have Prince of Pillow based on the fact that he's a three-year-old, none have won in the last decade, and I wouldn't be surprised if that extends back a bit longer than that. Um, not keen on the favourite, really. Seven to two seems skinny enough for me. Frankie de Tory factor is going to be playing into that a little bit, and I feel like he's a bit of a nearly horse equilateral. Um, so if I really can't warm to Rasel, I will probably take a flyer on either Arecibo or Mondamej just to hit the places at a bit of a bigger price. Well, there you go. We think he's good enough, Mondamej, and I love him. You I love think he's going to run well. Why do you love him? Well, I just think he's brilliant horse. He runs all the time. All right, yes, he's quirky, but you want that in these sprints. Sure. And if you look through some of his back class, this mm. could just set up here. I think he'll get a bit of cover and he's going to outlaw his price. And to be and fair, I'm, not, I'm not mad, so I want to take a price. You're probably better off here backing him to finish in the frame. Yes, you're probably not going to get a great run for your money in terms of the win part of the bet. But better to do that than back something really short and then that finish second. Because there's loads of question marks. You've got a flyer. Yeah, he's well, Monroe's in seven as well. He's got the high high enough draw. Uh, I like the the only horse that's big and in the better Macker over trained by Ed Walker. Um, not a huge name in this sprint in the vision. But interesting nonetheless. Uh, run a couple of decent races behind Azure Blue uh, recently who's obviously come out and almost won the uh, City of York Stakes at York. Yep. Uh, looks like a step down to five could be worth it. Not been seen out of races too strongly, but she's got a lot of speed. Uh, she was only sick for Haydock last time in the Cecil Frail, but she was on the wrong part of the track there. Uh, you needed to be wide that day, of course. And she's in stall nine, so at a massive price. Could quite unexposed, I thought she was probably the each way play. The company line then in the Achilles stakes, who's going to book their ticket uh, for the King's Stand is we don't like the market leaders. Will we like them up at Beverly? A really good day at Beverly. A couple of really good two-year-old races there, including the Hillary Needler, which used to be a listed race. And you've often seen Queen Mary fillies going here. Is there anything of that calibre? Well, the market suggests we have got a proper hot pot here in Midnight Affair, Ziggy's Phoenix for the Hannans. Really good week so far for Richard Hannans. Two year olds are just hitting the target all over the place, all the way down to Kalanasa. Kalanasa? Yeah, 33 to 1 shot. And uh, oh, yeah, Labu down there as well at 50 to 1. What do we make of the draw at Haydock? And what do we make of the draw at Beverly? Do you think they're two big draw courses these days still? Beverly in this race, it doesn't seem to be too pronounced. I think if you've got the best filly uh, and they can, you know, they've got the right attributes to deal with the, the demands of the track, then you're OK. Um, but it can get tricky, can't it? Um, but I think in this case, Haydock's the one to perhaps be more worried about because they haven't raced since that Temple Do you stage. think that they're going to do it again at Haydock? Uh, the amount of stick they've had. That's what a lot of people will be expecting for this meeting, to see something different. Stalls in the centre, of course. The jocks will make a beeline initially, expecting it to be there. But there was lots said about watering that day, wasn't there? Kirkland Telwright has just announced his departure, of course, after mm. you know, a huge tenure as clerk of the course there. Do you really think it's going to be the case again? I think it might be, um, because, you know, if we look at meetings like that historically, if it's rode one, one way one day, uh, then perhaps it's going to take a bit longer to get away from that bias. Um, listen, with me, my punting rules, even if it's against the draw, I'll never let it put me off if the price is right. I think that's what you've got to consider. Mm. And if Rassel does drift out, for instance, in that Achilles stakes, then I will be getting involved because he's a hold-up horse too, so that mm. probably gives him more time to find a position and 
probably edge further, but of course he is in one, so he's got the furthest way to go. So you've set us up for a horse coming steaming down the middle, which they can do at Beverly. Have you ever been to Beverly before? Rob, you wouldn't, you're a million to have been I to Beverly. I barely, barely ever go north of uh, no, I don't even know why I north north looked of Mads, have you ever he been to Beverly? He won't even step outside his front door to go racing. Very difficult Not to get him in the studio, Matt. isn't it? Rob, watch on the telly. Yeah, well, fair enough. There are a, lot, look, a lot of people are like that. You love going <laughs> racing. Have you ever been yeah. there? It Beverly, is one of no. the stiffest tracks you'll ever come across. It's like the Tower of Jumps. Really? It is just a. Pr it's so stiff. It's shockingly stiff when you get there, and you see something, don't you? This is where I'm going with this. If you see something kick two furlongs out, and you think, "Aye, aye, we got the money." They always tie up, and you see some great finishes there. Are we expecting something come over the top, or is the five a good thing? I was expecting her to be short, given her connections and given how well she ran on debut. But she did get beaten. And that was at Newmarket. Of course, we know the Rolly Mile undulating track. I did think she looked a little bit unbalanced there. Mm. And obviously, Beverly's not straightforward either. So that would be my slight question mark with her. But she's clearly got loads of ability. Um, but yeah, absolutely not getting involved um, with her at the prices. I think in this race, nine times out of ten, you want a horse that is really precocious on it, can break fast, can be agile, can deal with the undulations. Um, and one filly who may not be on face value, the most talented in this field, um, but who definitely ticks a lot of boxes is Alpha Moonstone for Craig Lidster. Okay. Um, quite a shrewd little trainer. He had um, a horse run well at Epsom over the week, uh, last weekend. Um, last time out, this filly won pretty much unchallenged. She wouldn't have been breaking any track records there. Um, the RPRs, you know, suggest that she's, she's not exceptional, but outside of the favourite, I'm not sure any of these are you know, truly wants to be running away from. Uh, and I think she can improve again. So at around the 20 to 1 mark, I think Alpha Moonstone, she's going to be well prepared for handling this test, I think. She's probably one of those where others will improve past her as the season goes on. Mm. But this should be her day to run a big race. All right, so these are best available odds if you're new to the show at the time of filming. I bet that 20 to 1 goes off. The Maddie's given a really coherent case there. For Alpha, uh, Robbie, you're not... Yeah, I like the way Mads looks at this race. Um, this favourite is just way too short, really. Um, I wouldn't have priced it up like that at all. Uh, I get the case with the Craig Lidster horse. Um, I always think Beverly's a really, really stiff track. You're going to need to stay quite well. And I think Never Fear, who's made a winning debut over six at Wolverhampton, uh, pedigree is out of a group two place miler. I think he, he's going to be, she's going to be staying on very strongly at the end. She's about seven to one. And the other one was Two Lula Bell uh, by Inns of Court, a sire that's made quite a decent start out of uh, a seven furlong winner, Lady Lucia. Um, she's another one on pedigree that makes a bit of a fit appeal for Omar who's won this race in the past but it's, uh, it's, it's probably a race to watch and learn to yeah, I don't really want to be getting involved in a favour I think she's the most likely winner but I had a look at Tallulah Bell as well because David Omar is second out two year olds always do for me but stall nine she's going to be pretty savvy from there I, I, I wouldn't be over Ziggy's Phoenix here. I think she might have, she might find this track again, so I think they're sort of rocking a hard place with her now. So another tricky puzzle and another favourite we don't like. Back to Haydock we go. Handicap time. It's a mile four race. Let's get the market up and see what the panel like in this. Thick and fast this weekend comes at you. And Cumulonimbus. Did I get it right, Mads? Cumulonimbus. Cumulonimbus. What does it mean? It's a cloud, isn't it? Cloud oh, formation. Like We've yeah. had Charlie Fellows on here before and he couldn't get it right. It is a front runner and it is a last time out winner. And it is drawn in stall one. And it will do for a lot of people. Good show of Keith Dalglish. Get Shirty, the veteran. I quite like him here. Forza Auto hasn't shown it so far this year. All the way down to live your dream there. Again, Maddie, let's give you the floor. Yeah, me and Robbie were talking about this race. We can't figure it out. We really don't like it. Nah. This is the hardest race of the day. Um, you've got a lot of horses who are quite slow, don't have great <laughs> turns of foot in here. And the only one who's probably not is Dark Pine, who is uh, by Dandy Man and probably not going to get this trip. So it dep depends which way you want to play it. Um, I think Cumulo Nimbus for, for four to one, as much as he's got plenty in his favour, and I know you like him, mm. um, I'd rather go elsewhere. Good show, I think, hasn't, again, hasn't really got a turn of foot, so could be vulnerable, especially if there's not a strong pace here, which I don't think there's going to be. Um, I guess by default, uh, that brings me to Forza Orta, who we know has a big performance in him. Uh, it tends to be at York, doesn't it? But um, not been running great, but is, is down to a nice enough mark now. Uh, these conditions should suit him. I'll keep one eye on um, the stay of Live Your Dream. Uh, he's got RPRs of 104, 104, 108 back in 2021, uh, running here off a mark of 100. So could run nicely here and then set him up for something else. Saeed Bin Saroor 
he's good at getting them ready after a bit of a break, but uh, this will be a big ask for him. Oh, Maddie's done her homework there with the figures. Has Robbie? Yeah, there's not, not not much pace in this. Is there? That's why I, I can only see the one front runner, which is Camila Nimbus. And I don't think he stays a yard further than one mile four, but I don't think he's going to need to. I think he's going to just control it out in front under Harry Davis. It's going to turn into a sprint. He's going to be best positioned. Uh, to get home first, but uh, the price—I was expecting—I was hoping for a little bit more in the price department. Well, it so looks like I'll, come I'll wait to if he, show a bit, I'll wait it? if he drifts or not. But I quite got, like get shirty. We were speaking about him. Just so up. much weight. Though. He's been so bad on his last couple of runs, so it doesn't give you a lot of faith, does it? Amara's just one of those trainers. It's a little bit like I don't know. He he, he does have targets for us, and if you go back to that maiden form, his last run over a mile four, when he sandwiched um, some good um, some good olfin horses, that puts him in the in, in the play. I'm not mad about the draw because it means he's going to get some, some cover. I like Charlie Fellow's horse, yeah, because I like you said the lack of pace. I wonder whether we might be looking at gift horse. He definitely won with a bit in hand. They like him. They're trying to get him up into some better handicaps. He he kind of has to lead. So you'll know your fate in the first furlong. He He's the right favourite, isn't he? I think so. I He'll think get so. a soft lead up, I think, unless unless someone does something surprising. Shall we go up in class? Let's do it, mate. Let's stick over the same course and distance, shall we? But it's the pinnacle stakes. We've spoken to David Egan about this. He's got a very interesting ride. Let's see what the market suggests at the 48-hour deck stage, which is where we are filming. And time lock for the Charltons and Judmont. Uh, yeah, definitely brings some solid form to the table. And Mimkiu, stanking the market on her return, but she's got some classy form. Madara, there she is. They're expecting her to go up. And Poptronic all the way down the back. Yeah, I'd almost definitely be putting up Poptronic if it was over a mile two. Um... I just think she's a very free goer. I just can't see her getting home over a mile four, but she's there's there's definitely a big one in her if she learns to settle. Uh, good run behind free win last time in the Middleton Stakes. But I think time lock, I think the bookies have it right with her being favourite. Um, ties in closely with Mimic Key on form. She's actually eleven pound better off for a neck defeat at Haydock uh, in a novice uh, the course and distance a few starts back. And she was ahead of her uh, at York um, in the Galtra Stakes despite uh well, she's £5 better off now, so I just think she's, she's waited to beat her. And uh, it's quite a nice comeback at Goodwood, uh, lightly raced. I think she's probably the best horse in the field, and she gets £5 from her main danger, so she'll do me. Mm, you tend to associate Roger Charlton's horses, certainly this year, with improving for a yeah. seasonal debut. Are you in tandem? or? No. Um, the way I look at this race is Mimkyu is the standout horse in theory. Um, and she looked as if she would come on plenty for that run last time at York. She would looked like the moral winner, really. Um, but I kind of think she should have got the job done um, on that one good performance mm. that she gave um, at Doncaster last year. That's the sort of standout piece of form from this. But, you know, we need to know that she can replicate it. Um, and I'm not quite convinced. Um, the two I was looking at, I agree with Robbie, Poptronic has been in my tracker for a long time because... She's classy, uh, but she's just too keen. If she settles, um, then she could see out a good race over 10 furlongs. But the two that I came down to were Sea Silk Road and Natros at the prices. Um, sea Silk Road <laughs> Connections won this um, last year. Yeah. Um, but Natros is uh, one and a half points bigger in the market. And you're laughing because it's, you know a, German, why, yeah. because it's a German trained horse. I think everyone that knows yeah. you has been watching this going, come on, man, in, see it up, Yeah, up. yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, she won the Italian Oaks and ran well over two miles last time, but she's got a bit of boot. Um, Philly by Australia, so she should be okay in these conditions. Uh, and on RPRs, she's right up there. She's yeah. recorded a couple of uh, 108s, um, and we don't really know how good she is. Uh, I just think there's not a real standout here, given that we need more evidence from MimQ and Natros is the biggest price of them by Poptronic, who probably won't stay and will be too keen because there's probably not that much pace in the race. So I think there could be some enterprising riding from Rennie Pil Pilichuk here. Um, if he wants to go forward, he can probably dictate and choose when to press the button and, and use his filly's confirmed stamina. Uh, I think she's too big a price at eight to one. Uh, yeah, we're okay. I'm, I'm glad that we got that out of the way. I think we've been waiting for that one. Uh, she's okay. also got good form with India, who uh, won the pre Alley France um, earlier on this season. She's a good filly. Okay, all right. I, I must admit, I'm drawn to Madara. I think the fact that they're running here as a 97 filly, they, they've just been getting her educated on the all-weather. This will be a stepping stone to the 
Rose of Lancaster, or the Lancashire Oaks, I should say. Do you remember that messy race last year? Oh, yes. He Free ran his wins. Group 1 winner in that, whose name escapes with his Shadwell Group 1 winner who won the Phillies and Mile with. Eshada. Oh, oh, how on earth did you get that? You were a million. I was looking at that. Brain box. Uh, yeah, well, okay, time for the final race. And a lot of people call this the John O'Gaunt weekend. It's one of those in-between weekends. We're waiting now after the derby, getting ready for Royal Ascot, aren't we? But this has always been an interesting race. Kim Ross won it a couple of years ago. Is there a Group 1 performer in the pack? Well, if there is, my eye might be drawn to one. But Jumby currently has the market. He's got a really, really big legion of fans, Jumby has. The astrologist at 11 to 4, the Australian rider, Ryan Moore, takes the ride. El Caballo bidding to bounce back from a lacklustre return. The Wizard of Eye for Stan Moore, that's his uh, stable star. Boardman, who uh, unfortunately for Boardman, it's not May anymore. And Gorak makes up the numbers, although a last time out winner. Who, now, there's some favourites in here, aren't there? Who is your favourite? Uh, none in this. You don't like any of them? No, I, I have a strong fancy, but I wouldn't say I have a particularly uh, Everyone loves close bored man, relationship don't they? with Everyone them. loves bored man. We know what he's going to do. He rocks up at Chester in May. If he doesn't win, he goes and wins somewhere next time at Haydock. Something like that. He will like the course, obviously, but he's just when it's May, you just back bored man and know you're going to <laughs> yeah. get some That's money. very niche, that is. It's, oh, no, absolutely. He's old enough. He's your selection, is he? No, I think this would be just slightly beyond him, and I think he might want a stronger pace to aim at. Yeah. yeah. Do you want me to go first? Please. I think the astrologist might win this. No. Yes, I think he might. Stop stealing my tips. Ah, okay. We're going. We'll see. Because go on, and let's hear it. Well, no, I thought. I thought he. I love the fact he's. Look, he's been brought up here for Royal Ascot, right? And I think the fact he did look a little bit like he wanted a stiffer test last time, didn't he? And Ryan Moore is on, and uh, I think they might just get the job done here. I think. I think he probably might go off Fav as well. He should do. He should be clear Fav. Uh, if he was trained in this country and people were more familiar with him, then I think he would be much, much shorter than 11 to 4-ish. Um, look, this is a horse who has been very, very close to winning two group ones. Uh, can the same be said about any of the others in this race? They're nowhere near as talented as him. Um, he's got plenty of winning form, over seven furlongs as well. We've seen him, obviously, in the Alquaz running an absolute belter. That was one of his nearly um, group ones. But he does stretch out. Um, he's just a really likeable performer. And I don't think his run that time, uh, last time at York was that bad. He finished seventh, um, just looked like he needed it a little mm. bit and stayed on one pace at the end. The horse behind him, Art Power, has gone on to win group race uh, in uh, the current since. So that form has been boosted. And I think the winner and Highfield Princess are both very, very good. Um, and, you know, I, I think he's got an awful lot in his favour. Ryan Moore's on board. Uh, he's just much, much better than these. And the official rating tells you that, you know, he's 115, Jumby's 109. Um, if he can come forward from his previous run, he should have too many guns for these. It's all there. We're aiming for the stars, me and Mad. Yeah. Talk us out of it. Well, he's also, he's got a three pound penalty and he's never run on ground anywhere near this quick. So mm. he's not certain to oh, okay. like it, so, uh, The, the um, yin to our yang, Robbie. Yeah, uh, I, I, I get what you're saying. He is, he is officially the best horse in the race. I just don't know if this race is going to suit him ideally. Uh, put up a two for the postman this week, John B and Wizard of Eye each way at sixes and eights. Um, I think at the prices now, I'll, I'll just speak about the, court, the horse's case first. Uh, well, John B loves fast ground. Uh, he missed the kick in the Abundant Stakes on his return. Well, he he did really that. well. That's something he, he can do. He did it particularly badly this time. Did really well to finish as close as he did to uh, Garrus and uh, a couple of others. What price was it at the start of the week? Kills put him up as well, didn't he, I think? Did he? I've got a uh, he, he was six. It's, it's, mm. Well, there you so go. We're in a nice position. We're not one each way. Uh, and then the lock in, I think a, a mile is a little bit too far, and I think he's on the wrong part of the track there. Um, and then the other one is the Wizard of Eye. I think he's probably still a back all price, to be honest. Um, He's not really finishing out his races over a mile recently. He's trading low in running, though. He was actually last off the bridle in the lock uh, He hit. He went off 125 times. He hit 16s on the exchange, which is quite short considering mm. how big his SP was. Uh, he's at 3.3 he's in the spring trophy, 10 to 1. He hit 1.3 in the all-weather mile, 11 to 1. He's now getting 7 on fast ground. Um, his best run on turf came on fast ground at Glorious Goodwood last year when he almost beat... Rocco Guiani, whose name's changed to Flaming Rabbit because he's moved to Hong Kong. Um, you like he, that, don't you? You yeah. were like, what's all this about, mate? He's this Flaming Rabbit geezer. <laughs> but uh, Rocco Guiani, uh, he lost a shoe that day as well. Uh, performance has been marked up. I think this is his ideal conditions that he's not had in a while. And it was a good running lockage, to be honest. So they're the two I'd side with. And now at the prices, I'll stick to the Wizard of Eye. He's a great big boy, the Wizard of Eye. I've seen him in the flesh, and I, I remember backing him when he won at Newbury as a two-year-old. He's absolutely massive. Huge I, boy. I, I really like him. I don't think he can beat the astrologist, though. 
What do you reckon? Get your comments in below. There are your previews. Right then, it's nap time. Regular viewers will know this is where we introduce our free bet offer to you. If you want to know how to get loads of free bets this weekend, check this out. Hope you've been enjoying that. Again, get your comments about that below. We think it's a great offer. And it's nap time. A lot of people just go straight to this point and try and work it out. You'll see the clip on Twitter as well. So, Robbie Wilders, you are allowed yeah. the floor because you are on a double. Let's have a mate. It's, it's slimming off pickings this week, isn't it? Uh, I've gone to the two-year-old trophy at Beverly, 315. And I've gone for Foster Lundia for Richard Hannon. Um, Hannon's had a lot of... He had a juvenile double at Newbury yesterday. He's had a lot of good two-year-old winners lately. Uh, this horse ran really well at Leicester on his first start. Um, I think they, they went pretty hard early on. He was always prominent. Um, the Godolphin odds on favourite cost like 650,000 guineas. He, he couldn't sustain the pace. He faded out of it. Then a hold up horse with experience called Golden Mind, half brother to perfect power, came out and won. But this is a quality introduction. He's still a maiden. RPR of 88, first time out. He's a third favourite at the time of speaking. This is the ammo horse. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He only ran 11 days ago, but he looks very forward. Um, I think that's, a, that's a, a big engine to do what he did there first time out. So that's the one for me. Hannon's right. tending to come on for their debut runs these days, aren't they? I know you said he's exactly. had a couple of winners, but it he's also a had a couple event. of yeah, yeah. run on. Yeah, he's about four or five years ago, he's won, yes, he's won yes, the Sun, took a massive leap forward from and yeah. the second run. I don't know how many winners he's had this week, but it's quite a few. Uh, Maddie. Yeah, I'm afraid I'm going to be a little bit boring this week. Uh, it is a tough week, as Robbie said, and I just have plenty of belief in the astrologist. Um, we've made the case before. He's got form over seven furlongs. He's very quick. Wasn't a bad run last time out. Um, and I just think he's classier. Than to the... see off the postman. I think he is not going to run very well. So we'll see. No, no, that's, that's very, damn that's very right. polite. <laughs> I bet you're really looking forward to coming back next week now, Matty. There you go. Oh, he doesn't scare me off. Oh, I, get, well. I get a lot wrong. I admit that. That's me for uh, He scares me quite a bit, I can tell you that much. But in 4.45, I'm anything but scared about the chances of just bring it. He was an unlucky in running fourth. He would have been second to the group class Clovey in the Silver Bowl at Haydock last time. He wins for Clive Cox. And there is your weekend travel. Royal Ascot is fast approaching. And here's what's coming your way from the Racing Post. What a shout kicks things off on Monday the 19th of June with Dave Orton and some of the Racing Post top judges taking you through their best bets for Royal Ascot Week. A double dose of the Racing Postcast with Tote Fantasy. That's right, Sam Hart kicks the week off looking at the opening four days alongside some of the Racing Post top tipsters and Friday to give you those Saturday winners. Wake up every morning of the festival at 9am with Good Morning Royal Ascot. David Jennings, Paul Keeley and some of the Racing Post's top personalities will preview each and every day. In the Know returns to your screens, brought to you by Coral, with me, Ross Briley, Paul Keeley and Pricewise himself, Tom Siegel, live from 6.30pm every night. Previewing the next day's racing, finding those winners, angles and strong opinions. It's an action-packed week and it's not to be missed. Subscribe to the Racing Post YouTube channel so you don't miss a thing. Well, sadly, that is all we've got time for on this weekend's What a Shout. What a pleasure. It's been to have Manny Plough back with us. Thanks for having Bring me. some yeah. class to the panel. I've been working Excuse with me. him now for a I've year. I've got my best polo shirt on, mate. What are you talking oh, about, yeah, class? Yeah, so last. <laughs> the line yeah, has about come time, back, isn't it? Yeah, absolutely. I don't think many people refer to me as classy, so I'll take that. But no, uh, I can no, vouch for that. It's a, it's a, <laughs> it's a tough weekend. Uh, and You were uh, livid to come and make your debut this yeah, weekend, weren't like, you? Well, give me a better we'll shot, We'll give you guys. a good one soon, don't worry. Yeah, um, but no, fingers crossed we can find some winners. I'm yeah. looking forward to it. And it's great to have you on the show, Maddie, as I'm sure everyone will. Indeed, get your feedback in for Maddie, and it'll be... Keep above the board, please, if you don't mind. Robbie, what are you doing yeah. this weekend then? What am I doing this weekend, mate? Uh, Champions League final, Saturday Ooh. night. Going to make a pile Who wins? Just is it um, just pile up? <laughs> yeah, going around my mate's house, going to make have a Spanish night. Going to get one of the geezers to make some churros. In fairness, I'm getting ask. on, mate. I'm nearly 30 now. It's, it's not like it used to be, the glory days. Yeah, absolutely. Um, you wait, mate. Watch a bit of racing, probably go, out, go and sit and common or something yeah oh, right, okay. relaxing right. <laughs> weather's good isn't it so if you live around Hampstead maybe you don't know the time to go to the coast uh, Maddie great to have you on alright and uh, great to have you with us as well don't forget safe gambling this weekend that's what it's all about right Ascot on the horizon pick your targets don't forget like subscribe comment and share wasn't it great to have David Egan on the show and you as well for myself enjoy this one.